Before I started this video, I just want to take a quick second to extend my sincere condolences to the people of Tanzania. I don't know much about many African countries and I don't need to know much about any country to know that losing a president, having a president die is a big deal. It's like the leader of a family. Maybe not everybody might like the leader of a family, but he's still the leader of the family. And yeah, I'm going to take this moment to just let you know that my heart goes with you. And um, I hope I hope things work out. I know there's a new president coming up, the vice president will be taking up the stage now. And even though the man was a president, I'm sure he was also a family person. And yeah, that sucks. Like, it sucks. So, sorry for your loss, guys, really. And um, yeah, let's get into the video. I'm going to be doing, uh, it's funny to just transition from that to this. Just, I don't know how people do it. But anyway, today we're doing Geography Now, Eritrea. On this channel, we'll do reaction videos to learn more about the African continent as much as reviews and essays, even though we don't do much of that anymore, but <laughs> those will definitely be coming back. And the reason why I decided to do Geography Now, Eritrea, is it Eritrea or Eritrea? It's because when I did the video that I'm going to put up here where I was talking about the, re the history of Ethiopia, I found out that it was, uh, you know, when Italians came, they actually had colonized Eritrea and then they used the trend to get in from that side to colonize and, and they lost Battle of Adwar. Watch the video. Pretty cool. Some comments told me there were some inconsistencies and I thought, hey, why not find out more about the country? Because there are, what, 54 African countries? Please correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. And I was born in one of them, Cameroon. And I just realized every single day how much I don't know about this African country. So these videos, really, as much as they are reaction videos and I'm having so much fun, is my own way to learn and to share with anybody who would like to learn more about the African continent. Because I think we have a lot, of, a lot to offer and the internet provides us a tool to do that. So uh, this video is a recommendation, a request, really, from two people. Well, Robo just told me to do reaction videos from you know all African countries. And then we had this... Lo, who said, nice video. Can you do a reaction video on Geography Now Eritrea? So, yes, this, this is it. We're doing it. We are doing the reaction video. So, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, if you haven't seen my face, stick around. Maybe it's the first time you're meeting me. I'll talk a little bit about myself when I'm done with this, okay? Let's join Barbie on Geography Now Eritrea. It has 1.3 million views. It was published in 2016. That's a long time ago. So, uh, let's go. Yes, they eat the same food, look the same, have the same religion, speak kind of the same, and have the same general historical roots. But do not call these people Ethiopians. Sound like a, sound like a goat there. Nah. It's time to learn geography. Nah. Nah. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Did you know that Italy tried to take over parts of Africa? Yeah, and it mm -hmm. didn't last that long, and it didn't end very well. But it happened. But first... Eritrea prides itself on its location, here's why. Eritrea is located on the Horn of Africa on the east side, bordering the Red Sea to the east, bordered by... Oh, let me move this thing around so you can have a look, because I don't like when I don't see clearly either. ...by Sudan, Ethiopia, and Djibouti. In addition to the mainland domain, they also administer the Dalak Archipelago, just off the coast, consisting of 124 small islands, only two of which are permanently inhabited, mm. Nora and Dohul, as well as a few of the Hanish Islands that they... All right, I'm going to move myself around a lot to this one, or just make myself small. It was a really, really small, right here. How does that sound? Can you see me? They had a huge dispute over Yemen. I'm not able to. Is have you have you noticed how uh, Barbie spews out so much information that you probably need to watch at? Somebody may mention of that in the comment section. You have to watch at like slower speed to actually grasp what he's saying because it's just a lot. Like seriously, come on. Inhabited, Nora and Doha, the coast, and Djibouti. In addition to the mainland domain, they also administer the Dalak Archipelago, just off the coast, consisting of 124 small islands, only two of which are permanently inhabited, Nora and Dohul, as well as a few of the Hanish Islands that they had a huge dispute over Yemen with, and the South Red Sea Islands in the south. The country is divided up into six regions, with the capital and largest city, Asmara, located in the central Makel Asmara. region. The country operates five main airports, the largest ones being Asmara, and the former capital when it was under the Italians, Masawa off the coast. Although Eritrea has the second largest coastline along the Red Sea after Egypt, not many people live there. Other than the cities what? of Masawa and Asab, most Eritreans live inland, especially in the areas surrounding the capital. This is partially due to the fact that, like some other countries we'll cover in future episodes, Eritrea has a generally dry and inhospitable coast. I mean, the South Red Sea region is kind of classified as one of the hottest areas on the planet. Nonetheless, they take their coastline seriously. When you own land along one of the big... 
busiest trading routes on the planet, you tackle that bad boy and tear it like a boss. I mean, unless your constituents kind of start hating you and then they put up an embargo, but hey, they'll come crawling back. They even set up camp. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y you know, I, I get that this is supposed to be like a geography video, but this Barbie is such an entertaining host. It, it's only explainable how much he's been able to grow the channel and the people he works for because he makes history and geography fun to watch. He makes it entertaining. I think it's pretty cool. Like I don't even I'm not I think I'm not getting like probably twenty percent of everything that I think if I'm picking up anything, I'm probably picking like one percent of what he's saying. And the rest is just like this is really cool. Camp and even having everyone's kinda of start hating you and then they put up an embargo, but hey, they'll come crawling back. They even set up camp and even have an exclave on the southernmost border with Djibouti on the Dumaira Peninsula because they were like, We wanna get as close as we can to the Bab al Mandab Strait. Home to quite a few archaeological sites like the ones in Kohaito, Matara, and Sanafe with the Aksumite ruins, many of which are yet to be explored, as well as a plethora of centuries old churches, monasteries, mosques, and mausoleums hidden along the cliffs on the outskirts Whoa. of towns. The Look at that. Look at look at that. It's old churches, monasteries, mosques and mausoleums hidden along How did they build this? Like What is this called? If you're from Eritrea and you're watching this, can you let me know like How do you even build this? It's like a path the cliffs on the outskirts of towns. The point is, with whatever land that they do have, they work to the best of their ability to feed their ever-growing population. Hmm. Let's explain. Now, yes, as mentioned before, many of the places in Eritrea's coast are generally hot and dry, which, to no surprise, is why the camel is actually the national animal. But that's only one part of the country. Surprisingly, they have quite a contrasting land makeup. Just like we mentioned in the Djibouti episode, the general area that Eritrea is located in is a hot mess when it comes to three tectonic plates, the Somali, African, and Arabian. All three of these converge into an area known as the Afar Triangle. Basically, the land is tearing itself apart. Oh, Eritrea wow. is located right at the fork of the East African Rift, including the Danakil Depression, I think he mentioned the same thing about Ethiopia, if I'm not wrong. That same uh, Afar drift. Let's see here. Self apart. Eritrea is located right at the fork of the East African Rift, including the Danakil Depression, shared with Ethiopia being labeled as the. Right at the fork of the East African Rift, including the Danakil Depression. Okay, this is it. Danakil Depression. I was like, where is this? Djibouti is right here. Oh, this is Djibouti. This is Eritrea. Uh, this should be. Where's Ethiopia? It should be. What if it is it? This is Ethiopia, shouldn't it? Yes, Addis Ababa is right here. Depression shared with Ethiopia being labeled as the hottest place on earth. Therefore, the rift creates oh. coastal highlands. The results looks like a backwards rain shadow effect in which the coasts are dry and hot and the inland areas are fertile and green. This is also why the majority of the population lives inland. In addition, this gives Eritrea a few volcanoes, most of which are Holocene and extinct. But then again, Nabra was thought to be extinct until it kind of went buck wild in 2011. Inland, you can find a range of landscapes from subtropical rainforests like the ones at Filfil, or you can find green Filfil. precipitous cliffs and canyons in the southern highlands. Despite the lush interior, there still is an issue with desertification and drought. The entire population is required by law starting at age 15 to take a month off and terrace hillsides with rocks to prevent erosion and hold in moisture. Wait, so it's decided by the country that by the age of 15 you have to carry rocks? Wait, let me, let me, let me hear that again. Like, what? Starting at age, there still is an issue with desertification and drought. The entire population is required by law starting at age 15 to take a month off and terrace hillsides with rocks to prevent erosion and hold in moisture. 80% of people live off of agriculture in which crops like barley, beans, lentils, sorghum, and the interestingly small grain teff is grown. Animals thrive in many parts of the country, especially in the lush interior regions. Over 500 different species of birds can be found, as well as mammals like warthogs, aardvarks, hares, gazelles, and hyraxes. In terms of predators, air Eritrea seems to have more canine species than feline. Wild dogs, golden wolves, and jackals, and hyenas dominate the highlands and plains. Resource-wise, Eritrea actually has a pretty decent diversified economy. However, two things they thrive off of are livestock and gold, specifically sheep and goats in the livestock. Gold has actually been mined here for centuries and makes up about- I had no idea. Like, this is why I love watching these videos because there's like stuff I didn't know. Like, I didn't know anything about Eritrea until I watched this video today. Gold. Livestock. Okay. 
Oh, eh, 15 or so percent of the export goats in the livestock. Gold has actually been mined here for centuries and makes up about eh, 15 or so percent of the exports. Eh, hold on to your horses though. Even though they have a lot of gold, they still have quite a ways to go in terms of economic development, which gets a little controversial. Let's, uh, let's discuss that in. Okay, so like mentioned before, Eritreans and Ethiopians will admit that they both have incredibly similar cultures, traditions, belief systems, and even language structures. In every reasonable sense, they are kind of like cousins. However, do not call Eritreans Ethiopians. First of all, the country has about 6.5 million people and has doubled its population since the 1990s. The country is made up of nine distinct ethnic groups, the largest ones being the Tigrinya at 55% and Tigray at 30%, and the remainder come from groups like the Saho, Kunama, Bilen, Rashaida, and others. Eritrea is one of the only two countries that uses the only indigenous African writing system in the world that's still used, which by the way, side note, <laughs> an Abu Gita is an alpha syllabic writing system similar to Arabic and Hebrew that incorporates consonant vowel clusters into syllable character units. The word Abu Gita even came from four letters of the Giz alphabet, A, Bu, Gi, and da. So basically, if you want to write something like the word house, it would kind of look something like this. The writing system is used Man, I don't know how. So basically, if you want to write something like the word house, it would kind of look something like this. House. Oh, look at that. So you have the the vowel, no, the consonants. Yeah, consonants, ow, vowel, sound, and then, oh, yeah. That's interesting. This. The writing system is used primarily to write Tigrinya, Tigray, and Amharic in Ethiopia. All three languages are pretty similar, and if they listen really hard, Eritreans and Ethiopians that speak these languages can kind of understand each other enough to get by. It's kind of like Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Now here's the thing, when Eritreans and Ethiopians meet each other, the first question they typically ask is, are you Habesha? And then they ask which country they're from. So what exactly is Habesha? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So at first like, wait. Are you Habesha before you ask which country you're from? Why? <laughs> yeah. Habesha people are incredibly unique Semitic mixed African okay. peoples that can only We saw this in the Ethiopian video, but I'm it's just confusing. Like, do you have Habesha people in Eritrea? That's yeah, that's why I'm like, why would you ask the question? Only be found in this area. Habesha people are incredibly unique Semitic mixed African peoples that can only be found in this area. Over millennia, Semitic people Keep in mind, not all Eritreans and Ethiopians are Habesha, but a significant portion of them are. Okay, so you can have Habesha in one of or both countries, technically, I guess. Hey, by the way, if I'm wrong or if he's wrong, comment section. Let me educate me. Have mixed in and created this beautiful new group of people found no area. Over millennia, Semitic peoples have mixed in and created this beautiful new group of people found nowhere else, the Habesha. A little bit over half the population adheres to Christianity, predominantly the Coptic Eritrean Orthodox Church, whereas the majority of the remaining population is mostly Sunni Muslim. They also use the Type C plug outlet, they drive on the right side of the road, and the currency is the Nafka. Now, because of the Italian occupation, Eritrea kind of has like a little bit of an Italian twang to it, where some of the buildings and shops have clearly influenced architectural styles. Pizza shops, cafes and cappuccino and espresso are all over and many of the residents especially the older generation in urban areas can actually still speak and understand Italian okay now this is where the distinctions are really gonna start to come out let's talk politics Eritrea kind of gets a bad label from the West because of some of the harsh policies that the government adheres to. Some even have gone so far as to label it as the North Korea of Africa. In the oh. simplest way I can put this, the modern day area of Eritrea was most likely the site of the ancient land of Punt. Fast forward after Punt. centuries of other empires and nations taking over until they finally got their independence from Ethiopia in 1993. Guys, I'm on a time constraint. We don't have time for full historical lessons. Just look it up yourselves. Basically, to this day, Isaias Afwerki has been the president since independence in 1993. In Cameroon, we've had two presidents, so we are better. <laughs> Frying pan is calling the pot black. Oh, man. And the country operates in a strange one bias. Afuerki has been the president since independence in 1993. And the country operates in a strange one-party system that has how can I put this, rather intense social policies? Everybody, male or female, are required to serve military conscription by the age of 18 and continue with national service. It's estimated that about a third of the country's military in the war against Ethiopia were actually women. Originally, national service was supposed to be for 18 months, but the policy changed and now it's kind of like an indefinite amount of time until the government deems complete. This 
This has been a huge hotbed of controversy wow. for many of the citizens since some have ended up serving for years and really have no say in it. This has also caused quite a few Eritreans to leave on a daily basis to avoid the conscription laws. The government defends itself by saying that they strongly emphasize the strength and wealth of a unified nation that works moving forward together. This is also one of the reasons why Eritrea doesn't accept most forms of foreign aid, believing that handouts will enable the citizens into an unhealthy dependency. The government has actually... I need to pause this here for a bit because I'm just so shocked personally at, you know how you live in a bubble? Like, I was born in Cameroon, I grew up in this town, moved to this other place, went to college. Now I'm finding out that there are countries where by 15 you have to carry rocks, by 18 you can get signed up to an army and stay in there indefinitely. I mean, this was done in 2016. I don't know if the president is still alive or if the policies are still... If you're from, if you're from Eritrea, please... Let me know in the comment section, like, how current is this information now? This is years ago, right? Yeah, so how current is this? Because it scares me to have to live in a country like this. Yo. Kind of done a relatively good job. Will enable the citizens into an unhealthy dependency. The government has actually kind of done a relatively good job at prioritizing the national budget towards education and health, though. This has, in return, helped okay. them reach their goals of essentially eradicating polio and most cases of malaria in the entire country. The problem, though, is that there's almost no economic movement, especially in the private sector, with an average annual income of around six hundred dollars a year. So essentially, the people are fairly healthy, but poor. Cycling is a popular sport out here though, and they actually host one of the most difficult routes in the world, the Asmara Karen Road. A lot of people from all over the world like cycling that road for some reason. Let's talk more about the people who are uh, kind of interact with this country, shall we? Eritrea is kind of, well, if we're going to be completely honest, let's just say they kind of isolate themselves a little bit. They've made enemies with pretty much all of their neighbors, you know, with battles and border disputes and wars with all of them, even Yemen. However, recently Sudan has been kind of fixing up things a little bit, but they still have some issues. This means that they kind of have to look outwards for diplomacy. Now, here's the most confusing circumstance. For some reason, they are friendly with both Israel and Iran. The president has gone to Israel for medical treatments and conducts business with them well, but also has visited the president of Iran and has made friendly ties with them. But they are also an observer state of the Arab League. So essentially, they do have some friends, but they just can't be in a room with all their friends at the same time. <laughs> some Eritreans might say that on a fiscal level, Qatar and China might be their close friends, but not necessarily their best, since they've invested heavily in their commerce and business. It's complicated. Their best friends are kind of themselves, honestly. In conclusion, yes, Eritrea has some issues, no denying that, but it's also a land overflowing with deep ancient history infused with Semitic African influences, coastal sea lovers, with a few leftover shavings of Italian spice mixed in there. And that's, that's pretty unique, isn't it? Stay tuned, Estonia is coming up next. <laughs> that was nice. Oh man, um... Yeah, that was a lot of information thrown at me. I need to probably process a lot of that. I feel like each of these Geography Now videos, you need to pause like every one minute. In fact, you need to even read the, the text, the description to see what's going on here. But from what I can grasp, um, the history of Eritrea, which is very closely linked to that of Ethiopia, I'm, trying to, uh, I'm, I'm getting a better picture of that part of the continent, you know, the geography, the politics, the economics, the social life. And what? It's called the North Korea of Africa. So I'm sure there's a lot more that I don't know. And as you know, on the channel, we'll find out, you know, what is accurate, what isn't accurate. So let me know in the comment section what you think about this. Uh, yeah, I'm still processing. It's a, lot, it's a lot to process for me because I, I don't... I've never seen anybody from Eritrea. Um, I've never met anyone. I, I feel like I'm mispronouncing the name of the country and I don't like that feeling. But yeah. So that was a video. If this is the first time that you're coming to the channel, my name is Kamga. I'm a Cameroonian. I currently live in the US. And on this channel, I've been doing a lot of reaction videos to learn more about the African continent. And the goal is to discover these countries using the internet, educate ourselves, and learn more about the continent and the world at large. So if you like to see this kind of content, I'm sure you see a lot of more videos on the channel. I'm going to put up the links here to the one I did, the reaction I did to the history uh, how Ethiopia lost the war to Italy, and then you'd see what had triggered my my desire to do this particular video with Eritrea because I found out there that, you know, Ethiopians had colonized before they moved in and tried to attack and lost and had a battle. You should check that out. The video is going to be up there. And, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. To my Tanzanian brothers and sisters who are watching, 
again, my sincere condolences. It's heavy. It's it's really heavy and um, it's sad. I hope things work out. I hope your new president carries on the mantle in her own way. And um, yeah, I hope more African countries will keep growing and learning from each other and we'll just build a better world. Like I, I really, maybe I'm just too optimistic, but I feel like if we learn about each other more, then we can live with each other better. So that's what I'm trying to do with this channel. Learn more about Africa, react to videos that I find interesting and learn more about the world. And so, yeah, if you like the video, like it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you would like to support the channel, there is going to be a link uh, to my Patreon page. I haven't made the announcement yet, so I'm just going to drop that in here now for now. But um, yeah, it's ready and you can go in there, figure out what you want to support and join me on Discord. Let's just have these conversations and you get a bunch of really cool stuff. So I'll be making the announcement later on. But in the meantime, if you want to be one of the early people, just go in there, jump in and we'll talk. All right. I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, don't give up hope. Once there's life, there's hope. And just do your best. Let God take care of the rest. I'll catch you in the next video. All right. You take care, my friend.